So now we're to the point where we're gonna go ahead and switch. Um, as you can see, I've cut it back on the on the mouth there. Gonna switch around to the back of the base here. Um, this part is somewhat <clears throat> somewhat difficult, but um, it's simple in instructions. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you cut from. You don't want to cut in into the hair and then. Um, you know, you're going to cut the hair. You don't want to cut the hair. That's the point. Um, so you want to, if you can, make an incision, peel it back, peel back the hair as much as you can, and you want to make an incision in the skin, in the skin, and then cut, and then cut from under. So I'm peeling back as much as I can the hair to make. I don't want to cut the hair, I just want to get under the skin. Alright, there we go. Now, if you can, cut from the bottom out. And I was thinking I maybe could use my, um, my gutting knife. And see, I'm still getting a little hair with that and that's not what I want to do now if you can peel it back some see if you can get your finger in there and I'm still and I'm not getting too much hair coming out but you just want to be mindful of that which is not cutting the hair <clears throat> so as I said it's difficult to do but simple in instruction <laughs> so if you can get your finger and this is where this buck is really frozen still um, and just going to make a little room in there make a little room release it from the so I don't cut the hair follicles that's why I made the room release the hair from the um, from the from the the carcass if you can I mean release the skin from the carcass so just trying to get in there and pull it back All right, now we're making headway. Okay, unless you're unless you're going to be using. Now I'm cutting up on an angle towards the towards the antlers. All right. All right, now I got my base there. I'm gonna try and get you a really good view here. Now I got my base there. I cut down to the, cut down to the skin, and cut through it. And as you can see, the skin is there. Um, now I'm gonna try and peel that back a little bit, just to give me a little bit of room in there. I'm gonna cut to the base. And being mindful of your knife. Now I'm going to cut on an angle towards the other, towards the other handler. And when you have room, you can release the skin as much as you can. And then you can get your knife in there. You can get your knife in there and cut without cutting the hair. There we go. Now, the point is to have this come to a pyramid. As you can see, it comes to a point, so you're not having a line going across your antler base. That'll look terrible um, when you mount it.
and you want to cut a straight line as much as possible because that will give you a straight line to sew. So it gets really tight in here um, with the with the in the antler base. I'm just cutting the sinew there, cutting all of the membrane that's attaching the skin to the head. And now I'm going to use a a um, a screwdriver to loosen it. So at this point, you want to use a screwdriver to um, loosen the skin around the base of the antlers. Um, as you can see here, in the in the antler, at the antler base, there is a tight ring that goes around the base of the antler. Okay, um, the skin is very tough there. That's why it's good to just go ahead and use a screwdriver to loosen it. Once you get that loosened on both sides, and you just work your way around that. I'm just going to open up the view a little bit. Work, gonna work your way around that. Then you can use the knife to cut your way out. To cut it loose. All right now, also at this point, you're going to be using life and the knife a lot but you're going to be um, you need to be very skillful in what you're doing so it would be a good habit to um, sit the knife down while if you don't need it if you're not using it so at this point I am all right so I'm just picking away some it's, it's kind of like picking away at it um, just like an ice pick will be. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take a take my my um, screwdriver and loosen it a bit again. And this is to make sure that you don't that you don't tear up your antlers, um, the base of them anyways. Get them, get all your gnarled antler edges all beat up from the knife. So you want to cut from the inside down. Okay. It's, it's it's hard down in there. It's really hard. And the knife kind of, I mean the 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 screwdriver kind of just chisels it out without actually taking off your gnarl points. So at this point, you can see it's got it pretty much loose. Being careful, being mindful of where you where you're cutting, where your knife is, pull it back and release it. There we go. Alright. So it's it's easier to just, you know, most people think it's just a cut, cut right through the uh, cut right through the hair and then you know do like a European mount or something like that. Um, it probably would be, but that's why taxidermy is so expensive. It takes a lot of work, and imagine, you know, I'm just doing one buck right now. Imagine if you had a business, you know, and um, you were doing six, seven, twenty, or thirty, you know, um, a month. I mean, that's that's crazy. Got a little hole in my in the uh, skull and the in the uh, 
hide there. Buck had to be, um, you know, life had to be in it because he just didn't want to really die. So it is what it is. Alright, so at this point, I've got it skinned down. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off. I'm gonna give my give the give the 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 ears a good grab and release them with the cartilage in. Okay? This part it gets a little bit easier. I'm cutting, peeling it back, and cutting the ear off. And there's the canal right there. All right, there we go. Yeah, he's still frozen, wow. These old, these old bucks don't, just don't wanna give you, give you a break. And they give you a hard time the whole way. He dressed out at over 150 something pounds, and uh, I mean that's just the meat. Um, so it's just gonna I mean, give me a hard time. But anything worth its salt is not gonna come come easy. <laughs> and speaking of salt, um, we're going to salt this hide. We want some, um, I get it, skint here. We're going to salt it, and that's to halt the bacteria process. So it's not getting any bacteria on it. Um, they're not, it's not growing on it. And uh, that'll make it a lot easier to keep the hair in. Okay, so um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and keep peeling forward and um, and I'm going to cut down to give it a little bit of a longer um, seam line here that's so I can work the work the um, the, the head out of the hide if you're having a lot of hair falling out which I'm not on this one um, I've had that happen before. Um, that's not a good sign. I mean, you're probably going to have hair fall out uh, once you mount it. It's not a good sign. So, alright, so just still working. Working it down. Um, yeah, this buck is still frozen. Man. Um, so that so now I'm just gonna keep pulling it down and uh, all right it helps if they're not frozen but thought I gave them a, enough time there. Better to have them like this than to have them where you um, you're having your hair fall out, and and uh, then after that, I mean you'll have a really bad hide. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep working down the down the edge here um, towards the towards the neck. And try and get, try and get it off. Gonna try and help it along here to release that skin. <clears throat> All right. 
So, cut that seam back. I can release it that way. And I'm not poking through the hide, I'm actually poking into the, the head, the meat of it. That'll cause my, my skinning, I mean my fleshing process to be a little bit longer. But you know what, at this point, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. That'll give me a chance to really show you guys what may be the worst case scenario. It'll give me a chance to show you that. So you'll know if you run into that issue how to handle it. Alright. Because it doesn't always go the way you want it to. That's the truth. All right. And as you can see, I'm just kind of using my um, my sharpener here to give me a little leverage to wake that skin up from its deep frozen sleep <laughs> really just stretching it <clears throat> all right <clears throat> now I can take and release that So now we can start working down the working down the front. <clears throat> and that was the pretty much the easy part I know it didn't look like it but that was the hard part is my the eyes all right So being mindful where your knife is, I know I keep repeating that, but that'll keep that fresh in your mind. Okay, so just working around the antler base here. And trying to release the eyes. And you're making relief cuts as you go along just so you can get a little wiggle room to work the hide into the position that you need it to be in. It's not terribly easy. Um, I think they've made vices um, that will hold 
the, the uh, carcass in a position so you can work around it. But I don't do taxidermy for business, so I haven't bought one of those. This is pretty much for the home taxidermist. Alright. Here's a big huge glob of fat. Right around the eyes. And when you get to the eyes like this, 